you know, wrestling fans, Monday Night Raw, just off the air, a, a, a decent show in my eyes. Was it the best? We haven't seen the best Monday Night Raw. We haven't seen a great Monday Night Raw in quite some time, wrestling fans. But tonight was decent. And honestly, they did something tonight that really should wake them up. Wake them up and say, hey, we should go with this. We should make this important. We should use our talent. This should not be a one and done and send them back to catering. Now, with that said, with this said, wrestling fans, I am not saying that the way they handled the tag team turmoil match tonight was a positive thing. I am not saying that whatsoever because, quite frankly, guys, the tag team turmoil matchup should have went through the entire match instead of stopping and going to the end. That doesn't really make it a tag team turmoil matchup. You know, uh, uh, either the New Day or Mansoor and Mustafa Ali overcoming, trying to overcome all the odds after that beatdown would have made it more of a tag team, a better, so to speak, tag team turmoil matchup. Even though we all knew what the end result was going to be, just based, just based, wrestling fans, off of the opening segment with Bobby Lashley <coughs> wanting, excuse me, uh, Bobby Lashley wanting uh, 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 another championship and the fact that Randy Orton is challenging for the WWE title now at Extreme Rules. So, I mean, WWE uh, really, really should have just drugged the entire turmoil matchup out. It would have made for a better matchup. And, and honestly, they could have stuck something else at the very end. Because, uh... Honestly, who who stayed, uh, unless you're a content creator or you are one of those absolute diehard wrestling fans, right to the very 10 o'clock hour of Monday Night Raw? Not that very many people. Not many at all. You probably saw the highlights or something like that. Okay? But... I mean, that's what I, uh, that, that's what I really saw at the tag team turmoil matchup. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, well, they shouldn't have done that crap. That's lazy riding. Uh, uh, they just wanted to fill in time and, and things like that and, and make the tag team titles seem important, guys. Yes, that's what they're doing, but also in my eyes, that should tell them, uh, just based off what we saw, that we should see more tag team wrestling on Monday Night Raw. More tag team wrestling outside of RK Bro and Bobby Lashley and MVP. Or RK Bro and the Viking Raiders. That's what that tells you, Okay. Y'all let me know what you're thinking about all that in the comments below. We found out that Charlotte will defend her Raw Women's Championship against Alexa Bliss and Lily. Some of you might say, well, I didn't know it was a handicap matchup, and I didn't know Lily was getting a, t number, uh, a title shot. Let, let's just be honest here. If, if Alexa Bliss is getting a Raw Women's title shot, then uh, we know Lily is too, because Lily will get involved in the match somehow. Either she will help Alexa Bliss win, or Charlotte will overcome all the odds, and... Rip Lily's head off and overcome uh, the the mind games that Lily plays and things of that nature. One of those two things is uh, going to happen, and we all know that WWE would book something like that because it's it's Charlotte, it's the queen of the WWE, and she's the only one that would be able to uh, overcome those type of odds. But 
It looks like Alexa Bliss is getting a shot at the Raw Women's Championship. Probably would be at Extreme Rules, honestly. So uh, we have that to look forward to. Now, <laughs> as far as Nia Jax and uh, Charlotte is concerned, no one really cared about the matchup. And honestly, I hope they break up Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax as a tag team. Shayna Baszler did much better on her own uh, when she had that mean, rough, uh, uh, kind of fighting style um, at first. So I hope that's the direction that they go down. Uh, I, I really do. I think that would benefit her, benefit her a lot in WWE uh, over on Raw. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest. Outside of that, you know, we saw Sheamus become the number one contender for the United States title. It's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Damian Priest versus uh, uh, Sheamus. Sheamus beat Drew McIntyre. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I would much rather have seen this go to a no contest, DQ, count out, something. Somehow, some way, made this a triple threat matchup. Because when was the last time, guys, we saw a triple threat? threat matchup at a pay-per-view for a title. It's either singles or a fatal four-way or a fatal five-way or six-way or something like that. We should see, oh, I guess I can, I guess I can point it out. Uh, uh, WrestleMania, uh, Edge, Daniel Bryan, and uh, Roman Reigns. Outside of that, we really haven't seen anything. So this would be a good spot. Drew McIntyre, the only title he hasn't uh, gained in WWE. Sheamus getting his uh, uh, rematch caused. And Damian Priest defending the title. Sheamus could take the pinfall. There you go. But no. We get the same stuff. And I'm not saying, wrestling fans, that uh, Sheamus and uh, Damian Priest is going to be a bad matchup. I'm not saying that because we all know it'll be a, a, a decent match. But um, it's the same old crap. Same crap. Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus was a pretty good contest tonight, if you ask me. But, um, you know, we've seen that half a dozen times or more. So, you know, something different. Okay, something different. You had something going there with the storyline last week. <sighs> now, now wrestling fans, let's move on to Bobby Lashley defending the title against RK Bro, or I should say Randy Orton. Another thing that I'm scratching my head at. Now, we all know that this is just to get by till Crown Jewel. We all know that. But why? Why? And I know I just talked about Damian Priest and uh, Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. But you had that storyline going on. You had that storyline going on and if that's the case you have that storyline going on you have Damian Priest staring down staring down Bobby Lashley at the end of Monday Night Raw uh, either last week or week before it wasn't last week it was the week before that you had Bobby Lashley getting stared down by Damian Priest why would you stop that rival? Just put Randy Orton in the main event. Now, I know some of you are going to disagree with me when I say that. Some of you will. Quite frankly, uh, Damian Priest could still have his match with Sheamus, could still defend the United States title uh, in a triple threat match on Monday Night Raw, on the way to, on the way to 
Extreme Rules, and then have the matchup with Bobby Lashley, or or wrestling fans, they can just stick all four of them in there, or something of that nature, because WWE always just throws away, throws it to the can, that uh, storylines from the past, from earlier in the year, about Drew McIntyre not being able to get another shot at the title. He could earn himself another shot and end up not taking it. Not too complicated. But you all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. I think they should have left Randy Orton out of it simply because they started a storyline already. And, guys, because Randy Orton and RK Bro could get into a rival with the tag team that won... Babyface or Hill, I think it should be Mustafa Ali and Mansoor, okay? And if they did not want to have the tag team title matchup, uh, guys, at Extreme Rules, and they wanted to just build it and build it and build it between those two uh, tag teams, have RK Bro defend the titles against someone else at Extreme Rules, and build that rival between those two tag teams until crown jewel where you take the titles away from rk bro and then set the matchup riddle and randy orton something of those lines but what do i know what do I know? I'm just somebody that looks at WWE stopping and starting storylines right in the middle of a build to a pay-per-view. And uh, just thinking, well, RK Bro, Randy Orton is the hottest thing on Monday Night Raw, so uh, we're going to forget about Damian Priest and that kind of stuff. Something we started earlier in the build to Extreme Rules. And we're going to put them with Bobby Lashley, only to have Randy Orton lose at Extreme Rules. Because... Bobby Lashley is facing Goldberg at Crown Jewel because Goldberg has his set on taking Bobby Lashley's soul. What do I know? Uh, what do I know, guys? But, uh, you know, wrestling fans, let me tell you. Outside of that, not a whole lot happened on Monday Night Raw. Um, I, for one... Uh, and not, I, for one, enjoyed it uh, a little bit. It wasn't the worst Raw, but it wasn't the best. I honestly wish they would have taken that tag team turmoil and put it all the way through at the very beginning. I would have. It would have made the most sense and it would have been the most enjoyable. And if you ask me, that matchup should tell you to start booking tag team wrestling on Monday nights outside of the Viking Raiders and RK Bro and Bobby Lashley and MVP. I'm getting out of here, wrestling fans. Y'all give me a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff. Follow me on Facebook at Wrestling1988. And until I see you again, this is Webby, and I'll catch all of you. On the other side, talk to you later.